Hi, welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name is Dan and I made a companion robot. I've had a few requests to talk through the approach that I took to create this project, so I'm going to try and give you all an overview and then get into more detail in subsequent videos. This project took around two years to create with whatever time I had available, and it was designed to be a test project first of all, so that I could work on how to display emotion on something that couldn't really do that using facial expressions. The original design was a cube that could actuate around a central column, but the space inside for components was just too limited to achieve what I wanted. The second approach that I took was to create something that I could build in stages that was fairly modular. This was so I could swap things out until I got the design confirmed and then built a PCB and finalized it. As you can see, the first version was much larger and used standard servos, but it felt a little oversized, so I scaled it down for version 2. The body is built out of 3D printed PLA plastic. It's inspired by a few sci-fi and movie robots, but I wanted to make it feel a little bit more like a real device instead of something that was non-functional. So this is my real-world, functional interpretation of that. The robot uses a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, it has facial detection and recognition, audio output of NeoPixels, which are addressable LEDs. It has a microwave sensor so that it can manage detecting motion without having a PIR because I never really liked the look of the PIRs and they're a little bit limited. Whereas this actually works through walls so it means it's a little bit more useful. It uses the microwave sensor to change into power saving mode if there isn't anyone near and after a certain time of day once it goes to sleep it won't wake back up again until the next morning. So the idea there is that it actually does go fully to sleep for the night and it's not waking up every time there's movement. It has a custom PCB which I designed and printed via a third party. It uses separate buck converters, one for the Pi and one for the Arduino and servos, so that they can be powered from one 12 volt battery. There's also a relay that cuts power to the servos in power saving mode. It uses USB-C for power so that it can deliver enough to the two buck converters that we can get five volts and 5.1 volts for the Raspberry Pi on separate lines. It did have the capacity to fit a lithium polymer battery, which is what the gap underneath is for. I decided to take that out because it didn't fit particularly well and the battery only lasted for about an hour. So it was very limited in terms of what you could do with it. The Raspberry Pi uses by far the most power of all, to the point that I don't know if it's really worth having the Raspberry Pi because you can do image recognition and other things on microcontrollers. However, I wanted to make it extensible. I wanted to make it programmable and flexible enough that I could do whatever I wanted to with it. So it uses a custom Python app to manage that behavior. It also has a safety cutoff. So if you have problems with any of the motors seizing or it falls over, for example, rather than damaging itself, there's actually a tilt switch in the head. So if you turn it upside down, the tilt switch engages and it starts the quick shutdown of the Raspberry Pi. Servo control is partly controlled by the Raspberry Pi and partly the Arduino. The Raspberry Pi sends a command to the Arduino over serial and the Arduino interprets the command and manages the actual movement of the servos. It means that rather than the servo snapping to the right position or the Pi having to send incremental commands to tell it to move at a certain speed, you can send the new position request to the Arduino and the Arduino manages the speed and keeps track of the current position. This is useful because it means if you want to make the motions more smooth, you can do that relatively easily by adjusting the Arduino code itself. The Arduino is actually programmable via the Raspberry Pi, so you can install the Arduino IDE on the Raspberry Pi and then upload the sketch directly. You don't need to unplug it and plug it into another computer first. It also has dual MEMS microphones and a buzzer for output. The buzzer uses a framework that I've built in the past called BrailleSpeak, where it converts text to audio tones, and I'll cover that in another video. I mentioned that it sleeps. It also dreams during that time. And what I mean by this is, if it has seen faces during the day, then it's stored a copy of those images and it can run a training model on them during the night to remember them for the next day. So every night it reprocesses the facial recognition training model and gets more accurate. I'll try to get into more detail in other videos. So if you're interested in seeing more about this project, please leave me a comment about the kind of thing you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.